On today's Winning Cures Everything, we got to talk about ACC expansion, right? Everybody's talking about it. Uh, we are going to talk about an LSU player that was suspended for the Florida State game. Uh, Georgia dealing with the running back issues. Reggie Bush. Uh, we're going to preview week zero. I'm going to give you the viewing guide for week zero. And, uh, and I'm going to tell you all of the bets that I've made thus far in the preseason. That's right. So let's go on and get to it. Can you believe it? It's football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. All right, welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. That's right, I'm your host, Gary Seegers. Of course, you can follow me on social media, Instagram, TikTok, etc., at GaryWCE. Uh, Twitter, that's a different story. We'll figure that out eventually. I've been suspended by Elon and the powers that be over in the Bay Area. Uh, who knows what that's about? They said it was uh, platform mani- uh, manipulation and spam. Okay, I mean, the only spamming or platform manipulation that I have done is linking to our BetUS College Football Show on YouTube, but uh, but alas, we shall see. Uh, It turns out if somebody reports you for links that go outside of the X profile or X platform, whatever, that's what happens. Uh, Either way, we'll, we'll figure it out. You guys can reach me over here on YouTube, and always email me. Gary at winningcureseverything.com if you want to talk to me about something. You can always do that. Uh, with that said, look, it's August 24th. It's Thursday. Week zero is upon us. So we got some things we got to talk about. Uh, the schedule going forward is going to be uh, interesting. We'll, we'll say that. The schedule will be interesting. Uh, some of you may have seen on the YouTube, uh, the YouTube community page uh, where I have created a post. Here is what we are looking at going forward, okay? We've got the Sunday Reaction Show. I'm going to have Matt Huey on with me. Uh, he is a physical therapist that's in uh, Texas. He watches college football. We are going to talk about the games that were on Saturday. Uh, so Sundays, we're going to have our reaction show with him. Monday is our latest news show. That will be right here on YouTube as well as the podcast. Tuesday, I've got the Bet US preview show along with the Winning Cures Everything uh, weekly preview show, which is part of what I'm going to do here, but that's going to be a bit shorter. Uh, that's going to be in your podcast feed only, or you can watch it on YouTube if you want to pay uh, the if you want to subscribe to it, right? The uh, the whatever it is, the mem- if you want to be a member, I think it's three dollars. Uh, they, they're getting that set up for me right now. I don't know. Wednesday, Bet US preview show part two. And the WCE Picks Show, Part 1. So I'm going to, any of the games that we did not hit, at least some of the biggest ones that we did not hit on the BetUS shows, I'm going to go through and give you my breakdown on those games, what my number says, etc. Uh, we're going to do Part 1 on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, or excuse me, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Central. Uh, Thursdays, we will have the WCE Picks Show, Part 2, and... That's right. I'm sure you probably already saw it. Three Dog Thursday with TJ Reeves is now going to be on this platform. So Three Dog Thursday will be here on Thursdays. Uh, And then Friday, we will have the Every Game Pod. And what I'm going to do there is it'll be in your podcast feed only, or you can watch it if you want to be a member on the YouTube page. Uh, But I'm going to go through... Every single game on the board in college football, give you what my number is, what I think about it, etc. I'll give you all of my plays, all that on Fridays. Just got to sign up to the podcast or become a member on YouTube. Very easy to do. Uh, So there's a lot going on here. Also, I do have a child that is on the way. Uh, Who knows when when she will decide to uh, appear. Uh, She's not here yet, but uh, she'll be here very, very soon. Due date is September 9th. Who knows? Who knows, right? All right. We got a lot to talk about, so let's go ahead and get to it. Uh, First off, Three Dog Thursday. Make sure and go and watch that. Myself and TJ, we're on today's show next week. Probably just going to be me and him again, but we are going to start bringing guests in on that as well. Uh, Basically, we just talk college football underdogs. 
That's right. Pick our three favorite underdogs for the week, and we have a good time doing it. So make sure you do that. Sign up over at his podcast. But the uh, the YouTube show is going to be right here on Winning Cures Everything. All right. Uh, the Bet US College Football Show. Also, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Make sure that you are subscribed to that channel as well. We have a good time doing that. It's, uh, it's always, always a lot of fun. So make sure that you check that out as well. Um, let's start off with this. Write down the times. You guys know how I do it. It's a one-man operation. I do everything over here. ACC expansion. Florida State and Clemson are voting on... They're voting no on this, but they do need, uh, if I'm not mistaken, one other person to vote no. As it sits, it looks like this thing is going to pass. Looks like North Carolina and North Carolina State are going to say yes to having Stanford, Cal, and SMU join. ESPN has ponied up $70 million additional annually, uh, $55 million of which is supposed to go to a performance-based pool. This is per Jim Williams over on uh, the Twitter there. Um, basically, SMU has told them we don't need a share from the ACC for like seven years. Stanford kind of saying the same thing. And Cal is taking a reduced share. So this is not going to cost a bunch of money, but it is going to expand the footprint of the ACC network, which in turn could give the ACC some more money to uh, to play around with to try and keep Florida State and Clemson and Miami, et cetera, happy, right? So uh, we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening with this. I'm Nothing surprises me in realignment anymore. Uh, but it is a bit comical that the only two Pac-12 schools that are left are Oregon State and Washington State, and they will be able to collect all of the NCAA tournament money, et cetera, uh, that is supposed to be handed out next year, because they are going to find a way to keep the Pac-12 together, but it's mainly going to be a merger with the Mountain West, but they have to keep the Pac-12 name slash company together in order to collect that money. It, it's it's a mess. It's an absolute mess. Uh, but I'm, I'm okay with this. Like Stanford and Cal feel like they belong with some of those universities in the ACC. Granted, they're on the complete opposite side of the country. Stanford, I mean, the closest flight from Palo Alto to any ACC team is to Louisville, and that's like 2,600 miles. I mean, it's it's a haul. Uh, it's like 3,000 to go from Berkeley to Miami. But alas, it is what it is. These are strange times, my friends. I've told you all before, I am convinced we are headed to a a big Super League that's got 30 to 40 teams. And then everything else will go back to the way it was. Regional rivalries. The biggest brands will be in this one big division that's, uh, that's apart from the NCAA. And everybody else will go back to being regional rivals. Because uh, there's not going to be a bunch of TV money. All the TV money is going to be spent on these big brands. There's going to be some TV money for the smaller brands. Um, but you got to figure out who are the biggest brands. right? Who's going to be... Uh, who's going to leave the SEC and who's going to leave the Big Ten to go into this next level, right? Mini NFL, whatever it is. Because it's going to happen. Trev Alberts has talked about it at Nebraska. So that's what's coming up on the horizon. Uh, let's move along. And I see LSU stud defensive lineman Mason Smith has been suspended for the first game of the season, which happens to be a massive, massive non-conference matchup against Florida State. This is a top 10 matchup. Uh, it's going to be on ABC, 6.30 p.m. Central on Sunday night of week one. Mason Smith, who was out almost all of last year, he got hurt against Florida State last year. He is not going to get to play in this game because, I don't know if you guys have followed this, he apparently was part of an autograph signing like a week before the NIL stuff was made legal by the NCAA. And under these rules, he received impermissible benefits. Kayshawn Butte was also part of this, but he's in the NFL now. He's playing for the Patriots. Uh, so he, he took his suspension last year. Mason Smith, however, was injured all year. He did not get to take his suspension. So, um, 
yeah, I don't know how I feel about this. I don't feel like it makes a ton of sense. Like, to avoid the suspension, couldn't he just give that money to charity or something along those lines? Like, it seems like that would make a lot more sense than suspending him for the first game, especially a massive game. Uh, But what this really feels like to me is you are wanting to set a precedent with this. And notice the suspension shows up right after... eh. Now, granted, timing could be everything with this because they did suspend Keishon Butte last year. But it's ironic that the Reggie Bush stuff, the defamation suit that he's going to file against the NCAA, this happens to pop up right after it. This is them saying, hey, well, here's an example of somebody that did something before the rules were changed, and we're going to hold them accountable as well, right? Just a guess. Just a guess. But I, I, I still think it's absolutely absurd. Like, it's, what what are we even doing here? Georgia running back Branson Robinson. It's announced that he is out for the season with a ruptured patella tendon. Uh, So that's definitely not good. He was the number one running back recruit in 2022's class. Uh, But you've also got uh, Dejon Edwards with an MCL sprain. That's another backup running back. The starter, Kendall Milton, uh, he's got a hamstring issue. And, uh, like, They've got to have some depth concerns at this point, right? You're, you're starting Carson Beck, who was the backup to Stetson Bennett last year. You've got a new offensive coordinator. I know Mike Bobo has been in and out and whatnot. He was there last year, um, but he's, he's the new guy calling plays. This is going to be interesting. How much do you trust the running backs that you still have going? Uh, I think Milton's going to be ready by week one. Who knows? Hammy's weird. Like this is going to be interesting to see with Georgia. Now the good news is, I mean they may not they may not need a running back for like the first, you know, eight weeks of the season. I mean who knows? Uh, they they are pretty loaded, but when you get unloaded at a specific position, uh, it can it can really hurt. It can really hurt. So Georgia, who loves their running backs, uh, felt like they were going to try and rely on them a little bit to get Carson Beck kind of acclimated to what's going on, I may not be able to do that. May not be able to do that. A lot of this rides on whether or not Kendall Milton is going to be ready to go. Reggie Bush, I brought that up just a minute ago. He has filed a defamation suit against the NCAA, or is going to file it. I'm not sure exactly what the status of that is right now, but uh, he is going to file a suit against them for defamation for saying that uh, basically, in a statement, they said pay-for-play is still not legal with the NCAA. And he's saying, hey, what I did was not pay-for-play. Like he, he took money from agents and whatnot. And it feels like this is kind of grasping for straws here. I, look, we get it, Reggie. But also, I don't believe that any of this has done uh, any, any kind of harm to your reputation or anything along those lines. Like, there's there's no, there's no, nothing that the NCAA said that hurts you in any way. You are still on TV. You are still wildly popular. So I think this is a bit of a reach, and it's pretty difficult to, to get a guilty hearing out of a defamation case in the United States. I mean, you have to be able to prove... All kinds of stuff. And I don't know that they're going to be able to prove that. Uh, I, now, I'm, I don't like the NCAA as much as the next guy. But I do feel like this is just one more thing for Reggie to continue his push to try and get his Heisman back. Um, and it's like, yes, I think he probably should have his Heisman back. However, man, this stuff is getting really old. Just really, really old. Uh, so I'm, I'm exhausted by it, but, you know. It is what it is. Uh, let's go through some uh, some rapid fire stuff here. And some more news and notes heading into week zero. Uh, South Carolina State coach Buddy Pugh he is retiring after 22 years at South Carolina State. Uh, he's you know obviously the head coach there. Uh, they won the MEAC eight times in his 22 seasons. That's pretty awesome. Uh, and he his team is the one that that famously just whooped up on. Uh, on Jackson State while Dion was there. Um, coming to your city. 
you know, and we're coming to your city. Uh, that will not be opening college game day anymore. There's going to be new artists. And we'll see exactly what it says. But 16 years, that was the theme song. And I, I guess I get it. I mean, Pollock is gone. Uh, the Bear is, you know, Chris Felica, he is headed over to Fox. Things are going to look different. Lee Corso still there for now. Um, Pat McAfee has joined officially. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little bit different. So I'm curious what they're going to do. I hope that they don't get stuff that's too, too modern. I'm sure they're going to. I mean, you want to be able to to bring in, you know, the younger audience and whatnot. But I don't know. Uh, there, there was something about that coming to your city song that was that was pretty awesome. Uh, so who who knows? Uh, Saturday morning, we will figure this out. We will see exactly what they're going to do with that. Uh, another note: Sam Jackson. That's right, the TCU transfer. He has won the Cal starting quarterback job. Uh, Jake Spavital, I think, is going to have a lot of fun with him at quarterback. Uh, that Cal offense could be interesting. That's the one thing that's been missing, right, for Justin Wilcox and company. Uh, just having some semblance of life on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, the defense has been in a downward decline. So they need they need something going right. Uh, but Sam Jackson, I'm a fan. I think I think he's interesting. He's a fun football player. Let's uh, let's see what he does. The Big Twelve Commissioner Brett Yormark, he was at Texas Tech, and he told all of them that he expects them to beat Texas this year. He told them go out and get it done, uh, beat those boys that are that are leaving our conference. Texas fans, of course, are in an uproar about this. But I mean, my gosh, would you not do the exact same thing? Like I. I love this from your mark. Like he is appealing to his base. His base is the people that are staying in the Big 12. So we'll see. We will see. Uh, also, happy two year anniversary, of course, to the Alliance. That's right. The ACC, the Pac 12, and the Big 10 formed an alliance on this date, August 24th, 2021, two years ago, that said that they didn't need a written agreement. They looked each other in the eyes, and they shook hands, and my word is bond. Of course, one of those guys, Kevin Warren, is now gone, and one of those conferences is also gone. So uh, we thought it was ridiculous at the time. It has proven to be such, as you can see. All right, let's, uh, let's hit the ad right quick, and, da, 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 and then we will jump into our Week Zero preview. Let's check out some things you should know about. Every Tuesday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, expert game analysis only on the BetUS TV College football channel. If you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or whatever's your favorite podcast app. And if your app allows it, leave a five-star written review. Visit the Winning Cures Everything web store to get all kinds of football shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and more. Visit winningcureseverything.com slash store to see what all we've added. And now, back to the show. All right, let's get back to it. Uh, let's see. Week zero preview. All right, you guys remember how I do this. Uh, I go piece by piece, and, uh, and we decide to preview it a different way from some people. So preview this week. Biggest brand games are who is going to get the highest ratings along with my, uh, my guess on that. And I'll tell you, I think this one's pretty easy. Uh, Notre Dame and Navy on NBC. This is a 2.30 p.m. Eastern time kick. It's from Ireland. Uh, it's going to be prime time over there. But over here, it's in the middle of the afternoon. And I'm going to say that this thing gets like 4.5 million viewers. Uh, the issue is this could become a blowout pretty quickly. Now, this game was 35-32 to 32 last year. It was 35-13 at the half. But Navy made a game out of it. There was a lot of viewers, but it was in the middle of everything else happening. There's going to be no other game on at this point. So I'm going to guess around four and a half million. Maybe we see an upper, like maybe five, maybe five million. But that's what I'm going to guess on this one. The most exciting game of week zero or the closest, whichever, whichever you want to say. I guess the most exciting could probably be uh, Florida International FIU and Louisiana Tech because I expect 
A lot of deep balls, fast offense, a lot of points, all that kind of stuff. But the closest games, UTEP and Jacksonville State. I'm going to have fun with this one. Uh, the first ever game at JSU Stadium, our first ever FBS game at JSU Stadium. Uh, it's a conference matchup. This is a you know important game, and I think that the Jacksonville State fans are going to be fired up for this one. They can fill that stadium, and I think they will on Saturday. So look for that one. That's a that's a one point line. I think that's probably yeah. I think that's about right. It should be about a pick 'em. Uh, Ohio San Diego State I think could be really exciting. Because I think that San Diego State's defense, even with a bunch of new faces, I think that they can kind of put the clamps down on Curtis Rourke coming back uh, from an injury, uh, which I think he tore his ACL in November of last year. So he'll be back. But, you know, that defense against that offense, that's an interesting coaching matchup. Kurt Maddox, of course, defense coordinator at San Diego State. And, of course, Tim Albin, the offensive coordinator slash head coach at Ohio. Uh, That's going to be a fun matchup. And then you've got... A not great offense with San Diego State against just a terrible defense for Ohio. So those uh, are the two games I think can be the closest or the most exciting. The most to gain or most to lose, I think, is Louisiana Tech. I think they've got the most to lose this week. Uh, there's so much hype around Sonny Cumbie's program right now. They went 3-9 and nine last year, but you know one of those losses was to FIU. They should be better than FIU. Uh, all the transfers that they brought in, there are so many people talking them up. I mean, I'm one of them. I've got them going 7-5 and five this year. So in order to do that, in order to keep the hype going, you have to win this first game against FIU. You're an 11-point favorite. Uh, you got to do that. If you're FIU, I guess they've got the most to gain, uh, but there's a lot more. I get USC, like they've got the most to lose as well. You can't lose to San Jose State, but I don't expect that. Notre Dame, it, you got Sam Hartman in. You don't want to lose to Navy, especially over in Ireland. Um, There's a lot of those. But I think as far as where we are this week, most to lose is Louisiana Tech on this one. Uh, The most likely underdog to win outright, Jacksonville State. They're only a one-point dog, but they're at home. It's going to be a massive game. They're going to have massive attendance at this one. Uh, I think that they can win the game outright. They're only a one-point dog again. As far as uh, other outright underdog winners, I mean, it wouldn't shock me to see Ohio uh, win against San Diego State, but they're only like a two-point dog as well. There's no double-digit dogs that I expect to win. FIU, eh, 11 points, no. Um, San Jose State, no. Navy, no. I I just, I I don't see it. Um, But it is what it is. We typically do a G5 game of the week, but pretty much all of these are G5 games, so... We're just gonna we're gonna toss an NA on that one for now. Now let's get to the college football viewing guide for week zero. And we'll pull it up on the screen over here. Da, 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 da. Here, we'll pull up there, and there we go. All right. Now, viewing guide for week zero. We're gonna start off with Navy and Notre Dame. That's 1:30 p.m. Central Time on NBC. Central Time, of course, God's time zone. Um, cfb.guide is where you can create your own on this. So you can go and check it out. They've already got their week one up as well. Uh, so go ahead and check that out. Uh, but after that, as you notice, basically everything is at night. Now they are all staggered, which is good. Uh, FS1 and ESPN did not cooperate with this, but everything else staggered times. So you get to watch the endings of all these games. Uh, but you, this is another friendly reminder that you should probably make sure that you go and get a couple more smaller TVs so that you can watch everything. You, you can stream basically everything now. Just get it done. Uh, the only thing, the only channel I feel like most people can't get is the Pac-12 network. So <laughs> just, just a heads up. Uh, Utah, Jacksonville State is going to be your 4.30 p.m. game on CBS Sports Network. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. We just talked about that one. UMass and New Mexico State. Uh, people love the dog there. I just, I don't get it. It's going to be 95 degrees in New Mexico State. UMass has no idea what they're walking into. And I think that New Mexico State offense is going to be rolling. Uh, the defense, I mean, they brought in some stud linebackers to replace the guys they lost. I think they're still going to be pretty good on that side. I like Jerry Kill. I like Jerry Kill. So, uh, Ohio, San Diego State. That one's on at the exact same time, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Excuse me, 6 p.m. Central time, God's time zone. Uh, on FS1, uh, Ohio San Diego State again, fun matchup, fun coaching matchup too. Uh, Hawaii at Vanderbilt on the SEC Network. 
Sharps love Hawaii right now. I am not seeing it. Like, I've got them under the three and a half for their win total. I just don't get it. I don't understand. Uh, and maybe I never will. I don't know. Uh, none, of, none of that makes any sense to me. But, uh, but yeah, to close out the night, of course, Pac-12 Network, USC hosting San Jose State. That's a 30 and a half point line. Uh, who knows? Uh, USC can, can, of course, do that. They can cover that if they want to, if they play their starters and whatnot. Uh, or they could get back north. We'll see. We will see. And then to close out the night, Florida International and Louisiana Tech. That one's going to be a fun late night game. Uh, very interesting. And that one's going to be on uh, CBS Sports Network. So make sure and stay tuned for that. Uh, it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm uh, I'm very, very much ready for, uh, for that. Uh, let's see. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is... I am going to tell you all of my... Yeah, you know what? No. We're going to pull that back up, and we're going to go through all of my bets. And I'm sure that you guys are going to love that. Uh, but I figured I would just be transparent with you guys. I don't do this every year. I needed to start doing it. But, uh, but I wanted to tell you exactly what I'm doing this year. So I'm going to read all of them off, and it's a lot. Okay. Uh, I, now I have not put a ton of money. Some of these I've put a tenth of a unit on. Some of them I've put uh, a fourth of a unit on. So nothing crazy, but no no major major plays. Penn State to win the national title at plus twenty two hundred. Clemson to win the national title at plus two thousand. Now those were both back in January. Uh, LSU over eight and a half at minus one thirty two. I've got Tennessee under nine and a half at minus one eighty eight. Colorado I bet at under four and a half at minus one forty two. I bet Ohio State to win the national title back in May at plus 600. Uh, Clemson, minus 10.5 at Duke for week one. Uh, that one's minus 110. Of course, that's a, that's a game. That's a spread game. Uh, Air Force, under 8.5 uh, at minus 150. So I have gone back and forth on them, uh, but I bet that one in May. So uh, another one from May 14th, Toledo, under 9.5 at minus 120. I like New Mexico to go under 4. Now, while I do like Brian Vincent, their offensive coordinator, and I do like Dylan Hopkins, the new quarterback that transferred in from UAB, that defense is going to be rough. Rocky Long left there uh, to head to Syracuse. New Mexico is going to be interesting. Bowling Green under five at minus 150. Some of these numbers you cannot get anymore, but again, trying to be transparent with you guys. Uh, Navy under six and a half at minus 110. I took Alabama to win the SEC at plus 225. I took Western Michigan under three and a half at plus 100. I took Alabama minus seven. You can get a better number than that. This was early June at minus 104. Uh, Miami of Ohio over six and a half wins at minus 125. I've got FIU under three wins at plus 105. I've got Iowa State under five and a half at plus 120 from back on June 15th. That was before all the gambling stuff. Uh, it took out, what, five starters from their team? So... Lots going on there. New Mexico State, I've got going over 5.5, uh, minus 120. I took Oregon State, minus 16.5 at San Jose State at minus 110. That's, of course, another week one game. Uh, Memphis, over 7.5 wins at minus 160. I've got Miami of Ohio to win the MAC East at plus 360. Alabama to go over 10.5 wins at plus 140. I've like NC State over 6.5 wins at minus 145. Hawaii under three and a half wins at plus 105. South Alabama to win the Sun Belt West at plus 150. I like UAB under five at minus 145. Marshall to win the Sun Belt East at plus 400. Alabama to win the SEC again because the number went up at plus 300. Uh, I've got San Diego State minus two and a half, which I gave out on the Bet US show. And I like the Florida International Louisiana Tech over 58 and a half at minus 110. For this weekend, I'm going to go over on that one. So, that's all the bets that I have right now, uh, and it's quite a few, quite a few. <laughs> I've got I've got quite a quite a bit tied up here, just based on the volume, right? Bet a lot of regular season win totals, a uh, lot of lot of championship odds, all that kind of stuff. It's a uh, it's a lot of fun. It really is. Uh, along with that, all right. So uh, we're we're on week zero. You guys want to be able to see my numbers on the game. 
Now, I don't necessarily trust these right now, but uh, we do need to, let's see, let's pull it back up. All right, solo web, and let's see. There we go. All right, let's talk about it. Uh, we've got Notre Dame minus 36.4775. So no, Notre Dame minus about 36 and a half against Navy. Again, I don't know that I trust that. Um, it just feels feels like it might be a bit too much, right? Like the, the line is 70, why or uh, 20, excuse me, 20 to 20 and a half. Why is my number so far off on this? Uh, that's the question. So, yeah, I'm not totally certain. Um, I like Notre Dame here, but the weather's going to be a little bit weird. Eh. Normally, this would be an absolute got to hammer it, but we'll see. Uh, UTEP and Jacksonville State. I have got Jacksonville State favored by .132 on this. Now, it says UTEP. Uh, these two teams are incredibly even. Uh, their overall talent, UTEP is number 130. Jacksonville State is number 133. If you look at their 2022 success margin, now I took Jacksonville State's and I put them into, I took all of their numbers and put it into the FBS. They were number 13. That's how, that's how good they were in FCS last year. We've seen this before, right? We saw this with James Madison last year. Jacksonville State was a really good FCS team last year. Um, James Madison came into the FBS and they beat Middle Tennessee like a drum. I think it was like 44 to 7. Middle Tennessee was favored by like six and a half or seven. And so just something to pay attention to. Uh, Zach Alley, the defensive coordinator, um, he's got a lot of returning production to work with. So pay attention to that. But interesting game there. New Mexico State and UMass. Again, I told you I love Jerry Kill. Uh, but my number on this, New Mexico State minus three and a half roundabout. Eh, okay, like the overall talent, UMass brought in a ton of P5 transfers. Uh, New Mexico State, on the other side, you know, they're they're incredibly explosive. We'll see what this UMass offense looks like with uh, Tyson Fomachon, uh, the former Clemson backup quarterback. I, I tend to trust New Mexico State here, but you start looking at some of these numbers, like returning production, UMass number 30, adjusted returning production. Uh, but man, you look at you look at what UMass was last year. Like, unless they have just completely overhauled this thing, ah, I'm interested. I'm interested. So it looks like two pretty evenly matched teams to me. But I do like New Mexico State at home. All right, San Diego State and Ohio. You see it here, San Diego State minus five point nine five two five. So I've got San Diego State, you know, closer to a touchdown than I do a pick'em. Uh, the overall talent is majorly in San Diego State's favor, but returning production, big time in Ohio's favor. Ohio number five in offensive adjusted returning production. So, yeah, this is something to pay attention to. We'll, uh, we'll see what they end up doing. But I, I, like, the, I like Kurt Maddox against Tim Albin, uh, or Tim Albin, however you want to say it. I like that matchup quite a bit. Uh, I like Vandy minus 14.625. Now, Again, sharps are all over Hawaii. Um, I can't get that blowout out of my head. 63 to 10 last year. I mean, just bonkers. Uh, the success margin, very similar. PPA margin, similar. Explosive margin, similar. It's something to pay attention to. Like, I'm, I'm interested in this one. So, I, Vandy has the talent to be able to just run them out. Uh, but we'll see what they do. We will see what they do. Uh, next up, USC and San Jose State. This line is 30 and a half. I've got it USC minus 36.87. Everything points to USC here. Uh, San Diego State, of course, San, uh, excuse me, San Jose State. They are number 108 in defensive adjusted returning production. That was their big thing last year. Now, maybe Chevon Cordero, Chevin Cordero, the quarterback for San Jose State, maybe he can do something against that USC defense, but... Um, I mean, they're number 10 in adjusted returning production. They got some horses on the defensive line now. Let's uh, let's see what Alex Grinch has got. So I, I think my number says USC should cover. I don't know that I trust it. Uh, and then finally, Louisiana Tech is favored by 11. I've got a minus 10.3 
ish, somewhere around there against FIU. Um, a lot of returning production for FIU. Louisiana Tech brought in a ton of transfers. You look at the overall talent, number 78 to number 106. Eh, okay. Uh, FIU won four games last year. Their postgame win expectancy said that they should have won probably closer to two. So there were a couple games where they got lucky and it, lucky. Let's not let's not get crazy, FIU fans. Okay, don't don't get super mad at me on this. But uh, but yeah, like the game against uh, Louisiana Tech last year went to double overtime. Like it's you know coin flip, coin flip kind of stuff. So that is the way that it goes. Um. I think we're ready to wrap this up. I believe that's right. Nothing else. Numbers on the games. We got that. Yeah, we're ready to rock and roll. Go and check out the Three Dog Thursday show. A lot of fun doing that with TJ. There's going to be a good time each week. Even when I'm out with the baby, he's going to be able to do that. So go ahead and check out Three Dog Thursday. Along with that, uh, check out the Sunday recap show. Myself and Matt Huey will be right here doing it up. Uh, you saw the schedule. I told you the schedule. You can go and check it out in the community section over on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, we're going to try and do something just about every day. I'm going to have a lot of content to put out there. Uh, if you get a chance, if you want to support the show, of course, make sure and hit that subscribe button. But, uh, but you can be a member too. You can check out those, uh, those extra shows as well. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast. And with that said, uh, I think it's time to leave. Oh, the Bet U.S. College Football Show. Subscribe to that. Tuesdays and Wednesdays, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, you can follow me on TikTok or Instagram, at GaryWCE. I'll let you know when I get Twitter back. If I get Twitter back, we'll see. Uh, but that should be it. With that said, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Uh, God bless college football, and hopefully, hopefully all of your tickets cash this weekend. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.